Welcome, my friends. In this video, we will discuss how we can use the standard deviation to determine what percentage of the values in a distribution fall between two numbers using Chebyshev's theorem. Chebyshev's theorem can be applied to any distribution, no matter its shape. It doesn't matter if the distribution is symmetrical, left skewed, right skewed, bimodal, uniform, or anything else. Chebyshev's theorem says that the percentage of values within k standard deviations of the mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared for any distribution. Let's look at an example. Let's assume this is our distribution. It's bell-shaped and symmetrical, but any distribution will work for Chebyshev's theorem. Let's say that the mean of this distribution is 100 and the standard deviation is 10. At least what percentage of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean? Well, the first thing to do is to understand what is meant by two standard deviations from the mean. Remember, the standard deviation is a measurement of the spread of data. Think of this standard deviation as a unit, and we need two of them. 2 times 10 is equal to 20, so two standard deviations are equal to 20 in this case. Also, k is equal to 2, since we define k as the number of standard deviations away from the mean in Chebyshev's theorem. Next, let's label the mean on our distribution. The mean is 100, which should fall somewhere in the middle of the distribution. Let's revisit the question. At least what percentage of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean? The word within suggests on either side of the mean, either above or below. So two standard deviations above the mean is 100 plus 20, which is equal to 120, and two standard deviations below the mean is 100 minus 20, which is equal to 80. So now we understand the picture and the problem a little bit better. We want to know what percent of the data falls between the values 80 and 120. So the area we need to solve for is this shaded area in the middle between 80 and 120. Now we are ready to plug into the formula. 1 minus 1 over k squared is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 squared since k is 2. This comes to 0.75 or 75%. So at least three-fourths, or 75% of the data, will fall within two standard deviations of the mean, or between 80 and 120. We say at least because Chebyshev's theorem is not all that precise, as it needs to work for any distribution. Many distributions will have more than 75% of the data within two standard deviations of the mean, but the number must be, at a minimum, 75%. Let's look at another example. Working with the same distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10, at least what percentage of the data falls between 75 and 125? This time we are told the boundary points, 75 and 125, which we can add to our distribution. But in this case we aren't told k, the number of standard deviations from the mean. We can verify here that both 75 and 125 are 25 units away from the mean of 100. 100 minus 75 is 25, and 125 minus 100 is also 25. This is a really important point. Chebyshev's theorem only works with numbers equally spaced out from the mean. So now we know the common difference is 25, but the question is, how many standard deviations is this? What is our value for k? Again, using the standard deviation as a unit, this is like asking how many units of size 10 do we need to make 25? 25 divided by 10 is equal to 2.5. So 25 is 2.5 standard deviations from the mean, which is our value for k. Plugging into the formula, we have 1 minus 1 divided by 2.5 squared, which is equal to 0.84, or 84%. So at least 84% of the data falls between 75 and 125. Using Chebyshev's theorem, you should be able to verify these three statements. For any distribution, at least 75% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean, at least 89% of the data is within 3 standard deviations of the mean, and at least 95% of the data is within 4.5 standard deviations of the mean. Just plug in k equals 2, 3, or 4.5 into the formula, and you should get the percentages that I have here. Also note that in order to use Chebyshev's theorem, k must be greater than or equal to 1. To see why, assume that k was equal to 0.5. Then we would have 1 minus 1 divided by 0.5 squared, which is equal to negative 3, and doesn't really make any sense. So k must be greater than or equal to 1. Alright my friends, we have finished our discussion on Chebyshev's theorem. We will be exploring many more fun and exciting statistical topics that you won't want to miss, so make sure to check out our other videos.